Hi, this is a bonus Q&A episode. I try and go live every Thursday afternoon on the School for the Dogs Instagram account, which is simply at School for the Dogs. If you would like to ask a question in advance or be notified when I am going to go live, you can go to schoolforthedogs.com slash Q&A. I also periodically answer questions on Clubhouse. You can find me there at Annie Grossman. A quick Thursday Q&A for you. If you're here and you have a question, you're welcome to ask it. But I have uh, a question that I got um, at... uh, AnnieGrossman.com slash ask that I really liked that I thought I'd share. And I'm rocking a side ponytail today. What do you think of my what do you think of this look? It was the best it was the best quick hairdo I could come up with if I was gonna have to show my face. Does it look does it look intentional? <laughs> uh <clears throat> Hey there, Dustbin Terrier, great name. Hi, Bo. <laughs> uh, Pixel. Okay, so uh, this question comes from Melissa. And, oh, did I lose it? Okay. Melissa, who is from um, St. Louis, Missouri, and has a corgi writes, um, Pachi is almost six months old. He and my two-year-old cat, Kovu, love to play around together, but sometimes they get too rough. Anytime this happens, I use the touch cue with my fingers and give him a tasty treat, but then he turns around and runs right back to Kovu. Sometimes it's friendly, uh, but Sometimes it's friendly, but it always escalates into a serious fight. Um, And then she has like a side note part, which I want to talk about in a second, but let's just talk about this part. So really great question. Um, Actually, I'm going to read the side note part now because I think it relates. So then she writes, "Uh, I've also given a name to the touch cue, which is Revelio. I'm using Harry Potter spells (laughs) as trick names, and he's brilliant. Isn't that cute? He comes when I call almost every time, but I guess playtime with Kovu uh, is more fun. Sometimes I grab his favorite toy to distract him from Kovu, but again, that only lasts for so long. Do you have any ideas? Thank you so much for your podcast. I'm amazed with how much I've been able to train Pachi within a short amount of time, uh, and especially with three syllable trick names, such as Expelliarmus (laughs) for Drop It. I was told that was impossible to do by a local trainer again uh thank you um so that's funny you know i've i've heard i've heard people too say dogs can only understand like one or two syllables but uh i think that's probably um bullshit uh and so good for you melissa for um going the harry potter spell name route i think that's uh very clever um, but to go back to the issue of what's going out, um, what's going on here with the cat and the dog, uh, I mean, Pachi's only six months old, so I would hope that you're able to get him some really good playtime. I think puppies ideally need a really good jaunt with other puppies every day, if that's possible. Um, doesn't need to be a dog park. In fact, my preference is like, play dates so if you know someone else who has a uh, a puppy um, about your dog's age it could even be the same dog every day I don't think it has to be different it could take place in your living room you don't need to have like some massive yard but puppies need to play with puppies um, ideally one-on-one I firmly believe this and I believe it can help solve a lot of issues um, short of playing with other puppies make sure you have a flirt pole I actually just talked about the flirt pole uh, in the last episode I did, I think flirt poles are a genius, genius way to exercise dogs to help them get out some of their 
they're crazies because it sounds to me like Pachi wants Kovu to be a dog. And of course, Kovu's not a dog, he's a cat. Um, but a couple things that you can do to make use of, of the good training that you're doing. I think it's, it's smart that you're doing the touch cue, but it sounds like you are waiting until Pachi attacks Kovu uh, to then give the touch cue. So that can become its own kind of loop, right? Where, where Pachi's like, well, I'm gonna go attach, uh, attack Kovu. Oh, sorry about the sound effect of Poppy eating a marrow bone here. Poppy, go do that over there. Um, I'm gonna go attack Kovu, and then mom is going to give me the touch cue, and then I'm gonna get a treat. <laughs> so in a way, you might actually inadvertently be training him to go touch Kovu because it's resulting in him getting this cue that he really likes, followed by um, a treat. Well, he likes the cue because he knows the behavior because he gets a reward, right? Um, so if you are going to try and use a touch cue in that way, I would make sure you do it more frequently and before do it before he starts going after Kovu. So if it's something, you know, if it's like usually he goes after Kovu after one minute, then be doing it every like 40, 30, 40 seconds, you know, set a timer if you need to. Um, but you you want to get his attention and you want to try and like de-escalate the situation before he starts attacking the cat. Also, by the way, you could be doing training with the cat too. I mean, you might as well. It sounds like you're having really good success with Pachi. Um, I would suggest uh, maybe just doing a hand touch for both of them. You know, at School for the Dogs, we use the cue break. So when two dogs are playing, we'll yell break. And, uh, and then the humans at the playtime rush in and give the dog a treat. And what is the dog learning? Every time I hear that word break, my, my human's got something really good for me, so I better go pay attention to what she's doing. Well, you could do that with a cat and a dog too. It doesn't even have to be as complicated as having your dog touch your hand and then clicking that and then giving a treat. You could just say break and give a treat. It's like classical conditioning. It's that simple. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to do some work with the cat too because your cat might be feeling left out you know the big difference between between training cats and dogs it's not that dogs are smarter it's that uh dogs are more interested generally speaking uh in food and dogs also do more so if dogs are you know if, if you have a lot of behavior that's happening you can capture a lot more behaviors um you know speaking in, in grand generalizations uh cats um <clears throat> tend to well I mean look at the look at the extremes in like popular culture you know you have like Garfield on one side and Lassie on the other right and um, uh, so if you have an animal who basically like naps a lot and can be finicky about food it can be harder to train them but some cats are super active um, and some cats uh, you know their appetite isn't finicky and some some uh, cats you can also um, train with like praise and play um, so try, um, try seeing how things go if you work in some training uh, for Kovu. Um, you know, another actually in, in the product and like my favorite product roundup that I did last week, I also talked about the Treat and Train, um, which is a remote controlled treat dispenser that I love using for lots of different things. Um, oh, and someone's asking if they can join live. Can you write out what your question is first, please? Thank you. Uh, and in the future, if you have a question, you can uh, go to anniegrossman.com slash ask and ask it in advance. Um, but yeah, uh, I like using the treat and train sometimes for training two animals at once because I feel like it can take some of the complexity out of it. So if I were using a treat and train for something like this, I would see which animal responds to it better. Um, some animals might be scared of it. It does make a kind of like... Uh, grinding noise and a beep although you can turn the beep off but it still makes a grinding noise but um, you know let's say your cat had had no problems with it you could fill that with dry food or treats um, and when you do your recall with Kovu whether it's asking for a touch cue or just giving that break cue you could simultaneously be triggering the treat and train like a, uh, in the other direction um, to be giving Kovu a break in the other direction. Of course, if you have another uh, human there to be doing this with you, you could both be uh, <laughs> doing it. You don't necessarily need the remote control treat dispenser, but I'm just thinking if you're doing it alone. Um, 
yeah anyway so those are my suggestions and why doing it in the separate direction well i think that that might help both animals sort of have a break um, and reset uh, have a little space from each other um, actually you know one last tip is make sure that when when they are playing again i want you to be breaking it up very regularly before the dog has a chance to go after the cat but um the other thing is make sure each animal has like a place to go that's like a safe space that could be your lap it could be going under a table but that's something else that we really like to do like in our puppy play times forever the rule is if a puppy comes into your lap even if it's not your puppy <laughs> if a puppy goes into your lap your job is now to protect the puppy you are going to push away the other dogs that come near you want your your animal to know that there is a safe base where they are not going to be bothered and uh if that safe base can be you or or whatever human is around uh all the better um because you know ideally your dog already has uh, associations or your cat has associations with you as a source of um of safety from whatever um so make sure that um, both the cat and the dog have somewhere to go if it's not you then some kind of place where they can go to escape so they are not feeling forced, uh, especially the cat. I don't want your cat to feel forced into the situation. Um, so summarize, train both animals at once, make sure that dog is getting some really good playtime, practice lots of breaks, break things up before things um, get heated, and make sure both animals have um, a safe zone. All right, hope this was helpful. Um, and uh, thanks to you guys for being here. Uh, the couple of you who are asking about going live, I would let you go live, but I would like to know what your question is first to make sure that it's appropriate. Um, so please just next time type that in, or you can ask me in advance. Uh, again, annierosemancom slash ask, and I will uh, invite you to come on. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.